The following is a presentation of TFNN. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Every trading day, live at 10 a.m. Eastern. Call now, toll free at 877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Now, Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Welcome, folks. Appreciate you growling and prowling with us out here. We have the Dow Industrials up 204, NASDAQ up 61, S&P's up 25, gold contract down $5, was trading at $14.79 an ounce. You have silver off 26 cents, $16.98 an ounce. Light sweet crude. I heard that update. It's quite a quite a move here. Two dollars since early overnight. Yeah. Fifty-eight dollars seven cents a barrel. Notes and bonds. You get the 10-year down 12 ticks, 129.20. 30 year off a point plus one tick at 159.02 in King Dollar. King Dollar down 211 ticks, trading 97, 524. Euros at 110, just about a 111. The yen is out here at 108.79, and the pound is at 131. And you get that euro and the pound. They're, they're, going, they're going higher, man. There's, there's no doubt about that. You got NATO, that. right? You had Trump over there with Merkel this morning, I heard. A yeah. uh, lot going on in the market, let alone renewed optimism, man. Trade deal's back on. Trade what deal's a difference a day on. makes. Folks, every trading day right here, 11 to 12 Eastern Standard Time, I'm man, Mr. Kevin Hinks and his team at TD Ameritrade. Outstanding program. You want to understand the options market. You want to understand futures, all the above. Option strategies, awesome program. Kevin Hanks, what's going on? Good morning, Tom. Good morning, Tommy. Guys, didn't we sit on this show 24 hours ago <laughs> and talk about the fact that I thought the mainstream media was getting it a little wrong, seizing on one point of all his talking points, and that the administration was going to come out and say something. And sure enough, there it is. Overnight, Bloomberg reports talking to someone in the administration that, you know, the trade deal is actually much closer. This was extremely predictable that these markets would have the reaction they did and then something else would come out. So and, and this said, doesn't it, really surprise me at all, frankly. It, well, if we, if we replayed, you know, if you, didn't, if you heard the update yesterday, folks, it's pretty cool. Because when I was coming into work this morning, Kevin, what was sticking in my head was the, your VIX crush. Because your, your, yeah, right. your quote at the end of the interview yesterday Didn't take long. was that, yeah, the VIX is at 18, but guess what? It's going to be at 16 in a heartbeat. Well, guess what? It opened at 16 today, 16 and a half, and it's at 14 and a half. <laughs> That's yeah, pretty intense. I mean, That's pretty you know, intense, man. These aren't real... Uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not, I don't have a crystal ball. No, no, I but know certainly that, but it's pretty 30 cool. 30 some years in this business right. make you understand that this is shaky. This spike in VIX, this short term spike in VIX is shaky, and to be careful with it. Well, you know what's so cool? What I've got to understand by talking with you for so many years now, right, is that, and, and this is really important, folks, when you're trading the option market in general, I think. It, it seems that. Real pros inside the option market, right? You're, you're basically always trying to sell volatility, right? Not always, but I mean, th that's a big part of the option market, right? And right. understanding volatility in general, right? Sure. Yeah. I would say that's, that's absolutely true. What you're doing, you know, if you talk to most professional traders, they trade delta, but they also trade implied volatility. Right. right, and they they're either long it or they're short it, yes. and they're picking their spots based on everything they look at the market. And you know, when it was twelve ish at this time of the year, you know, sure you can take days off the calendar, and that'll affect implied volatility. But the over, overall, when it gets down to twelve, you have to be trading it from the long side. It's just a good smart bet. If you're short VIX around twelve, guess what? You may make money. It's a very you know, there, there's a chance you could be profitable. Yeah. But but you're being profitable with with the wrong position, and eventually the odds and uh, reverting to the mean is going to get you, and it's going to get you big. Right. So. 
you know, it's 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 as simple as buy low, sell high, and then wait, right? I mean, uh, implied volatility either in indexes or VIX or in individual names, it's a mean reverting instrument. And so when it's low, it's going to go back to the middle. When it's high, it's going to go back to the middle. Yeah, it's pretty cool that it's so statistical, right? Yeah, it's one of the things, the VIX, where it just can't go up forever or go down forever. Unlike stocks, right. any stock could go up or down forever in theory, right? The right. VIX, that, that can't and, happen, really. You know, Tommy, you got it right on the nose, and that's what we talk about all the time. Professional traders like trading volatility because they can trust it. Yes. They can trust when it's high, eventually it's going to come back down. They trust when it's low, it's eventually going to go back up. Yeah. And they love the fact that they can trust that. No, you can see it, you know, and I mean, when you think about how many times the world is supposed to be over, and guess what, you know, it's never going to be over. <laughs> I didn't think it was going to come back in 14, 15, Not 24 hours, no, though, no, my no, goodness. No, yeah. totally, totally. Well, that's what makes trading so cool, it is. too. I mean, it there's, is, there's, no, there's no two ways about that, yeah. because, you know, you can, you know, and when we're talking here, folks, again, this is where the option strategies come in as to understanding, you know, putting a, a few of these different strategies together as to where you are in the marketplace. Right. So if you thought that was going to happen, what's the best way to make a trade to profit from that, right? Exactly. That's the coolest right. part right. of listening. It's to about understanding what implied volatility is, what it means, becoming proficient in getting the right strategy on to take advantage of when implied volatility goes up and down. If you can do that, if you can become proficient in trading implied volatility, options in general as an industry gets much easier. Yeah, no, I, I can definitely see that. There's no doubt about it. So it's going to get interesting. I mean, you know, we get the, the market up a couple hundred bucks, no doubt about that. Uh, these notes and bonds, man, they still, you know, they're backing off a little, but <laughs> it looks to me like they still want higher price, and the good old king dollar is finally uh, giving it up a little. I guess the, the euro and the pound look like they do want to go higher. You know, I think the bond market is really interesting because yesterday was insane how the bond market moved. Oh, yeah. I mean, that was a, how many standard deviation moves that? I don't measure that in the bond market, but that's got to be enormous oh, yeah. in terms of a one-day move. So the fact that, you know, they're only coming down uh, a little bit here. Let me look on my chart. What are they? I mean, they're, they're, they're coming down a small fraction of what they went up. No, no, totally. Yeah. And, you know, you, you expect it anyway. But, I mean, yesterday we, we hit that 1.7 yield pretty quick. Might yeah. have hit 1.69, actually. Yeah. I think yeah. we got to 1.6. Yeah. So they've jumped back a little bit. But, boy, you're still talking about historically low interest rates here. And something that, you know, even though they got down to, you know, pretty low le levels there, w the 1.4 level, they didn't spend a lot of time there. No, but this is still, 176 on the 10-year, still a historically low number. Oh, yeah. It, it's, there's, there's no doubt. You know, so, it, it, you know, it's interesting, Kevin. I'm sure you've probably seen it with the Expedia. You know, they got rid of the CFO and the CEO. Yeah. That, that's, yeah. that's so unusual. Folks. They, they must have had a, 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 basically a, a brawl inside as to where this is going to go. The chart's a mess anyway, but I guess they, they Dilla will come back and fix it, right? You know? I mean, you know, a lot of these companies, they're getting very mature now, you know, so some of the growth aspect is out of them. Yeah. And now they've got to really start cranking out. They, you know, they want they want money. They want return on their money. They want to see good earnings. So, yeah. uh, you Expedia know. is going to watch out for Google. I mean, Google is you know, sure. they're, they're they're eating into that travel business pretty good, man. Definitely. Uh, and, you, and and think about it. Expedia, what does Expedia have? They're a middleman. Yes. Right. Yes. Who has nice margins? Yep. Right. Guess what? Amazon and all these companies attack now. I was waiting for the Amazon to get dropped. Anytime. Yeah. Margins? Do you say margins? Yeah. Get Bezos <laughs> on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> Folks, 45 minutes from right now. Outstanding program. Kevin, you have a great one, a safe one. Of course, we look forward to the program. Have a great day, guys. Thank you. You too, Kevin. Thank Thanks, you. man. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I are coming right back. If you're not currently using the Taz Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The Taz Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. 
Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up and coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LA. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. 877-927-6648. Uh, uh, oil, right? So, we sure do. So let's say what is it? we got about uh, 11 Fif minutes to oil, right? Yeah, we got exactly. So 1018 right now. We get the crude numbers at 1030 Wednesday morning. Looks like the number. So we're up here. This is the crude oil inventory EIA number. The survey number, which is the median analyst number, is looking for a decline of about 1.5 million barrels. The whisper number, which is the number that you can put in in Bloomberg, anybody with a terminal, a lot of industry insiders, uh, but less reliant, as in we can right. put a number in here that's going to skew that whisper number, sure. and it's dependent on nothing. The analyst numbers, that's dependent on their job. You're an analyst that's out yeah. of the loop, man. You're, you're in trouble. Nonetheless, they're looking for a decline between 1.5 and 2.5 million barrels. But boy, oh boy, like we talked about, what a yeah. move in oil we've had, right? Just this morning, man, we're at $58.22 right now. That, yeah, that's live. And early this morning, we were at 56. We were with a 56.20 handle, and we're at a 58.20 handle. $2 since 3 in the morning, 7 hours, basically, we've run up there. And let's just see what kind of volatility, if this is going to be even close. Now, what happens is you get this type of movement. Sometimes the available spreads don't line up very well because there's just been so much movement. So the 11 a.m.s, you'd have volatility. The highest spread has a floor of 57.75 which is amazing that usually they have spreads on NADEX that you can get out of the money if you want. Yes. Well, the, the highest spread out here is already 50 cents in the money. Right. Right. Because it's moved so much. It's just moved $2 right. in no right. time. And now that's the 11 a.m. though, because those get set early at about yeah. 9. Let's see where the noons line up. You might have a little bit better action. There we go. We do. 
$58 is a price point we could use, okay? Um, it still doesn't line up exactly. You're going to have 22 cents of value on either side, and, and maybe today's not the day for a, a pure volatility. I mean, maybe today's the day of a little mean reversion where you actually go, go bearish to, to pull back some of that on that number. I mean, crudes continue to struggle. Let's just see. Um, oops, that's the, yeah, those are the 12 expirations. Is let's just, I'm just curious, like, you know, if you want a little bit of exposure to the downside, you buy an out of the money put, basically, yeah. right, with a spread going from 58 to 56.50. I say you buy it, you're going to sell this, you're basically buying a put, you're selling the spread with a ceiling, come on, come on, computer, uh, you're selling the spread with a ceiling at 58, so you're 25 cents out of the money, but boy, oh boy, if you get a little mean reversion, man, you're putting up 15 bucks, now you're 40 cents out of the money here. As in, you're, you're, you're selling it at 57 84 yeah. the contract's at 58 25 but not bad putting up 15 bucks. That's your max risk, and you got profit potential all the way down to 56 50 so you're risking essentially $15, and you got 135 down to 56 50 um, If you're bearish, I like that trade, you know? You yeah, got to be bearish. And, and look at that API number last night. One of the targets got up in the day. Okay. Tent. It's a monster number. Minus 3.7. Yeah. And that would be that would be the reason why yes. you get the whisper much bigger than the analyst. Because uh, the analyst yeah. number's out there ahead of time. And how oil moved, I guess, since last night. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Definitely. Um, that move did start, though, at about 3 in the morning. Yeah. That API out last night at like 4.30. Um, so we'll see what happens, man. Go for it. Jump around. Yeah. The L. December. We we were just, you were just looking at the December. Let's see if that's going to be the same. This is the January. Okay. Interesting. Okay. Wow! Look at that move, man. Yeah. Holy cow! Three hundred and thirty-seven thousand contracts. Top of the range is this fifty-eight sixty-eight. Yeah. Yeah. This does. <laughs> way this looks here, it doesn't look like it wants to back off. Well, no, that's it. You know, yeah. it's tough to be yeah. bearish oil yeah. when you just trade it up $2. Yeah. But and you do get mean reversion, man. Oh, yeah. it, oh, it would have been the same way. It would have been tough to be bullish the market yesterday at 10 in the morning when the S&Ps were 90 points off their high from early Monday morning. But guess what? I think we're up probably 45, 50 S&P points yeah. from that price level. Yeah, I heard that on the, on the yeah. update. And well, and what I do have here, I mean, you come in the top of the range here is like that 58.70. Sure. That it hasn't sure. been hasn't been able to basically get up and over it. So, yeah. You know, we'll see where this uh, basically shakes out. The uh, there's no doubt that combined with the uh, S and P's moving is. So what are you gonna do? Let's see. Yeah. Let's see. So uh, if I'm looking, if you're, if you're bearish, you would hope that maybe you're gonna have more of a supply, right? So we're going to come in at uh, minus 1.25. There you go. Okay. Yeah. We'll see where we come in. And that would, you know, it, if you get, when you go from 3.72. 3 On the API, uh, sure. Could, people will be looking for that today. Said, okay, well, you know, what, what is, is this going to match up? Is it that far off? I mean, you mean? Sure. Just jumping around a bit to see if we get a 58. Yeah, I mean, the dailies are way off because the dailies set last night. Um, and the only one that's even close is the one that set at 10 a.m. when the move already started. And you do get a price point of 58 if you wanted there. And like I said, you know, you could be a little bit bearish. You're selling it. You could be even bullish. I mean, the other side is if you're bullish, that's still a nice you know, trade as well. Cents, right? Yeah, you know. Particularly you... buying something at highs like this. You know, you've, you're up $2.00. You know, if you think you can go up another two dollars or a buck or fifty cents, well, sure, great. This is the way to do it inside the option market. Right, because you're you're getting in at fifty eight thirty seven contracts trading at fifty eight twenty three. So essentially, you're paying fifteen cents a premium in right. there, and your losses are capped at fifty eight dollars on the dot because you get a bad number here. This could drop to fifty seven seventy in a heartbeat, oh, yeah. and at least you're capped at that fifty eight dollar price point. Still not a bad risk reward if you think the trend is just going to keep going up. Yeah. We hitting 56, uh, excuse me, 59, $59, $60 oil? We haven't seen $60 oil in a while, man. No, we haven't. We haven't. Each and every time it's getting up to that 57, 75, 58. That's, it seems to just give it up. That's, that's where this... Uh, I know you're going up. to the most. I'm just going to jump real quick. I wanted to see, because Expedia we talked about, right? CEO and CFO out. You can see when that news broke this morning. A little bit of a thrust downward real quick, but boom, just like that, the yeah. stock higher 6%. Uh, higher this morning. 
And then how about Google as well? Yeah. You got Larry and Sergey out in the executive roles, but the CEO, so um, Larry Page was the CEO of Alphabet. Yes. You had, and, and I got to get his name now because he's CEO of um, Alphabet now, but that's the CEO of Google was basically running the day-to-day -day oh, yeah. already. And so that's right. why you really didn't see a huge reaction even last night when this news broke. They're going to leave him to do all the press conferences and all the... I think he was already doing them. No, he was. That's but a, but yeah. I'm just saying, Google's going to have a lot more antitrust and all of this in the next couple of years. Sure, sure. They decided, hey, man, uh, you know, let me get out of here. Well, it, it's, they had already stepped away from that public role of, um, yeah. you know being the face of the conference calls and so forth because Google is the driving company. Alphabet's the umbrella they fall under. And so he was kind of already the, the sure. head of the CEO yeah. of Google. So, but pretty interesting in terms of those two guys stepping out and, of executive and, roles. When you think they've been there for almost 20 years, man. And they're still the controlling shareholders. So between both of them, they will have more than 51% of the voting stock. Oh, voting stock. That's the, and that's, that's all that matters. That is. Right? Do you know what I mean? It's really pretty intriguing, folks, that, you know, they, and they were one of the first ones that built that structure. How do we get into like there? That. For PHDC? Um, right? Yeah. Yes. Because yeah. it is interesting when you pull it up. Where are they? Come on. There we go. There's, there they are. Took us ticket to between yeah. the two of them, they got about 40 million shares. And the, see what it says is that not only that there it says they, that's 5.8 percent of the company, sure. but yet they say it's 11 percent, but they got voting. Yeah, that's Zuckerberg's deal, too. Stay right there, folks. Come right back. Hi folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Welcome back, folks. Uh, oil in inventories. That's a big number. It is. We should. 4.86 million barrels dropped. So we got even more of a decrease. Yeah. It should be less supply. Should equal higher prices. We'll jump back to the chart. There's your crude oil. Give it a moment to recalibrate. Not too much of a move, man. Yeah. Maybe the market's saying, hey, we just went up $2 in the last seven hours. Exactly. We knew this was coming. Um, pretty muted response with that type oh, of action, for please. sure. Yeah. $58.26, no real movement at all. And um, we'll see how that shakes out, though. But the number coming in, headline number, as it ticks down, 4.86. And wait, let's see. Uh, gasoline inventories rose 3.39 million. What a, what a diver divergence there, huh? Yeah. You know, so they used a lot of oil. They made it into gasoline, but then they didn't sell the gasoline. <laughs> yeah, right. Right. Yeah, yeah. Stockpiles built. Right, right. Uh, if we go over here for the this is the top live. These give some good analysis sometimes. So there's your headlines. Yeah. Oh, crude falls four point eight six, gas rises three point three nine. And um the Bloomberg user survey was expecting about a two point five six as we saw in that whisper. Yeah, and oil prices just cannot decide if they want to move higher despite the big drop. Basically, no no reaction. Well, um, you know, it, I mean, it's pretty hard for oil by the barrel to basically sustain price when the biggest part of the oil by the barrel is gasoline. Uh, and, 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 you know, they get a build on gasoline. You know and what I mean? so look at this. It looks like nothing, but we just got 15 cents to the downside. And this is why I kind of said, you know, a little mean reversion, man. We just went up $2. Yeah. Do you really think oil's going to go up $4? In one day, that's really hard. Um, I wonder what would happen if we did get a decline of only 1.5, because we just got a decline of almost 5 million barrels, Yes. and the price just dropped 10 pennies. Right. Pretty right. interesting, yeah. I think all that price did. 877-927-6648. Let's get over and take a look at this dollar. So dollar's been getting a little action. Actually, I want, I'm going to go to the euro and the pound also. Yeah, so they the, tie into it well. So. Yeah, so the euro is down, uh, the, the dollar's down 148. The euro, we're going to have our man, Mr. Teddy Kegstaff, on at uh, 40 past. 10 40, minutes from yeah, right now, 40. that's right. Okay, so let's get over the swing point a bit. He's talking forex, yeah. forex, dash trading, dash unlock.com. Yeah. We got a lot going on, man. 110, and then the British pound. This really looks like it has some juice. Oh, look at this. This is a breakout. Okay, so... You get a nice consolidation at 130. This is a nice break. What's we that? had a nice consolidation yeah. until it got above it this morning. 130. Let me yeah. see this here. That's 122. Now that's going all the way that's back to October, eight. man. Yeah, Things have eight. changed a lot in the last month, two months now, actually. That's October 8th. Two months. So you got a 135A to B. What is that? 135 up there? 133. Yeah, you're going to 133. So that's a good move, man. Oh, definitely. That's a good move. Yeah. And, uh, they're happy with uh, whatever Johnson. Uh, I think what it is is that's a Johnson's there. leading. Looks like he's going to be able to solidify. That's going to lead to a clear and cut, maybe Brexit or a path towards a Brexit. Okay. And it seems like he has a lead in the polls for the election. And um, the the analyst out there this morning saying, as long as he really just keeps quiet and doesn't make a gaffe, right. that uh, he'll hold that through the, the election. And it seems like that's kind of what's happening as he's over there with NATO this morning. Yeah, and it's, it's, it's today's the 4th of December already, right? It sure is. And I think that's the 16th that they're, they're going to do that. So Christmas, three weeks from today. Is it? That's how math works, 21 days, boom. That's sick. That's right. Let's, let's go overseas and take a look at overseas. So last night, folks, uh, in Asia, bottom line is that Asia couldn't move last night. Yeah, the Hang Seng down 1%. You know, Nikkei was down 1%. Let me go look at the yen just for a second. Take a look at this yen. The yen was getting stronger yesterday. Well, it's up 22 ticks, but it got to a lower low today. The, uh, in Europe, let's go look at the DAX first, because the DAX, you know, Basically, it was up 22 points yesterday, but it okay. got slammed. So it's up 151 today. Okay. The FTSE, now this, the FTSE never came back yesterday. Let me see what that's doing last night. Yeah, see, that's interesting, man. The FTSE, you know, and this, of course, is the UK. That, that thing came down, you know, hard and stayed down. You know, we went from two days from 7,400 to 
7134. It's just kind of it's up 13. I wonder how that in plays there. in. Maybe we can ask uh, Teddy if he's got a take on that in terms of if you get a lot of pound strength, man. Is that gonna is that gonna actually weaken maybe the footsie over there because you gotta imagine it, it, right? I yeah, mean, because they've got used to now they've got used to a weak pound. You, you saw the pop in the pound today, and maybe that's saying a little bit like, yeah. listen, that's great for the economy in general, right? But it's gonna be a little bit tough on some of those companies doing business overseas outside of the that, borders of England. That's yeah. right. Yeah, you know, and that's why these currency, uh, currency in general, folks. That's why if you take one currency at a time and start wrapping your head around it. Um, it's pretty cool starting to understand what value is, you know, versus what an equity is, what a piece of land is, what the currency is. Sure. So, because that, because currency is the biggest equation in it. Really, it is. You know? It is. And um, you know, up until uh, a few years ago, the mantra was we always want a strong dollar, man, and I that's what I believe in because you want to have a strong dollar because that's how everything is based across the world. All right. It's very it easy to say, why don't you just make our dollar worthless, and then We'll be able to have great trade. Right. Well, guess what? Fast forward a few years when your economy is worthless because your dollar is worthless. That's not a recipe for future success. Well, yeah. Anyhow, I'll show you an exact example of that, right? If we pull up the British real, what you're going to see. Okay, so this is at 4.19 real to one US dollar, which is very weak, okay? But what I want to bring you back to, watch this. I'm going to bring this back, folks. Because when, when things are going great in Brazil, you know, this is, two th let's just say yeah. 2008, okay? You're at 1.56. You know, you, you popped up to 2.6, nothing heavy. But then all the way going all, all the way over to 2011, 2012, you're still 1.71. And what you had there is that Brazil's a huge commodity country. Sure. Okay, so we had the commodity right. bull run there, yeah. right? Now, what you, what you also had is that the, the folks in Brazil said there was a lot of them that were so smart. What they did, they came here because they go yes. back and forth to Miami like nothing, okay? And you talk about buying Miami right. and buying Orlando. And that's what I was going to go Miami and Orlando, they're huge. The reason why you want a strong currency in your country is because commodities are always going to be available to you in your own currency. Right. So if you start trashing your own currency, what happens when you want to buy gold? Yes. Oil, right? You want yes. to trash the dollar and right. you're not going to be able to pay for oil because your economy is worthless in terms of your currency. You know, when you talk about wood, right? You want to buy wood. Right. Wood's based in, in all currencies. Yeah. So if you trash your own currency, you want to buy, you know, real commodity goods. That's where it really could hurt you when your, your dollars, oh. you know, wor not worth what it used to be because commodities are priced in every single currency across the globe. Yeah. So it's real easy to, you know, compete with companies and, and specific, you know, and I, and I get that, you know, whether it's Brazil devaluing theirs and it's gonna help them in aluminum and steel or whatever it is, but boy, oh, they, oh boy, they, man. They're just a mess. That's it why is, it's, it is. It's, 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 you know. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I are coming right back. We have the Dow up 180, NASDAQ up 52, S&P's up 23, come right back. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. 
Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow is up 175. Nasdaq's up 48. S&Ps are up 22. Let's go over to our man, Mr. Teddy Kegstad, as we do each and every Wednesday at 40 past the hour. You can reach Teddy, folks, at every trading day at forex-trading-unlock.com. That's forex-trading-unlock.com. In fact, when Tommy and I were hunting uh, our man Teddy this morning, you go up on the site, and they're pushing us right to the St. Peter's uh, Power and uh, Sailboat Show, which we actually can see out our Gotta windows. Got to love geolocating uh, <laughs> ads online, right? There we go. St. Petersburg Power and Sailboat <laughs> Show, let alone the great site, forex trading Dutch Unlock. I love there it. we go. Hey. How, how's that, Teddy? We, we look out our window, and we, we can see the boat show. It's right outside. It's, we're only a couple blocks away from the water. But that was so cool, uh, man. thing to be looking at. It's pretty cold here in Chicago. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Well, hey, we got a lot to talk about today, man. We have a very good day to talk about the currency. The dollar index is making some pretty big moves over the past couple of days. Yes, yes. And how about that pound? It looks like the pound just broke topside, right? We we finally got our breakout to the upside. And, uh, you know, I was looking for it to hit 131, you know, after like maybe a couple of sessions. But it just did it in one little shot today, you know. Yes. So very impressive move. Yeah. So when you, when you get something like that, you know, I guess the pound, the, we got a couple of weeks for the knowing what's going on over there. But when you get a continuation move like that, is, you know, are you looking for like a 133, 135 in the future? Or does it just stall out for a bit? How does that normally work? Um, well, normally, if it wasn't because I'm looking at the dollar index right now, I would say that I think the pound would probably take a little bit of a slower grind up towards one, a buck 32, a buck 33. Okay. Um, but if, the, if you look at the dollar index in the past couple sessions, it made a higher move high, and then as of yesterday, made a lower move low and had a really big range over a couple sessions. Um, that's a very negative indication that the uh, dollar is probably going to be under pressure for a couple days. And I think that might give a little more lift to the pound and you have a little more volatility. I mean, the pound, when it starts to move, it, it, a day like today could be followed up by another day that actually moves at two, two full dollars easily. Really yeah. interesting, yeah. And it's been down for so long, right? I mean, you know, right. depending on how long you've, you know, basically been around, folks, the pound, you don't see the pound a lot at $1. thirty. Every time you go to Europe, well, every time Not you go recently, to London, at least, yeah. you know, the bottom line is that I remember at, at a buck ninety, I remember the two ten. I mean, it's like a closet over there would cost you a fortune. Brexit's been going on for three years plus, yeah. so it's become a new right. norm, yeah. All right. 
right? And the way it based now, you know, over the past like two months, you know how it was wedging. Yes. I mean, it just held solid with very tight ranges, which is not normal for the pound. And I think that with their election, I think is December 13th or 16th. I can't remember correct. Okay. It's one of those dates. Um, so I think I was expecting it to kind of just grind higher if you know things were looking kind of positive for like you know Boris Johnson. Uh, but now I think with the dollar index under pressure like it is, and I, if you look at the uh, the Swiss, it did this. It looks the same as a, as the uh, dollar index. It made a higher move high. It looked like it wanted to really kind of make, hold that parity, and then all of a sudden it collapsed. You know, and made a lower move low. So that's a neutral to, to bearish sign for the dollar index, the Swiss. The yen, however, that's the one I tell you guys, I, it's amazing how it gets beat up with the dollar initially, and then all of a sudden, as the dollar is getting pounded, somehow the, the dollar finds strength against the yen. Yeah, yeah, which I don't want. <laughs> no, I know you don't want it. <laughs> hey, it is what it is, though. That I, is I, true. I get that. There's no doubt about that, man. Um, it's the one anomaly of the of the major currency cross rates. I mean, the New Zealand dollar looks like the British pound too today. I mean, it's un unbelievable how high it is. So, and that's a big deal because when you start to get your lesser majors that actually are moving that much, that volatility, that kind of a range, then no matter what, the dollar index is going to look heavy. And then currencies like the euro, which were up today and now are kind of almost unchanged, you know, they yeah. could still rebound and make a run for the highs again if the pound stays up there. Yes, no, I, I can see that. And you know, it's intriguing. You're talking about the um, currencies from you know other smaller nations, but a lot of them are commodity countries. That hits the commodity market pretty intense. Uh, you know, like uh, we're looking at uh, the Aussie dollar. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Versus iron ore. I mean, it gets really intriguing in the context. Right. These these countries have been used to low uh, currency rates, and you know the commodity market in, in itself. I mean, in the long run, they're going to be ten times better. You know, of course, if the commodities go up, because then they're, they're all going to have strong currencies. Definitely. You know, the you got to watch the CRB index now. Yes. Yeah. The variation, man, like in some of these, I guess in all countries. I mean, I, listen, I dollar was at 70, what, you know, eight years ago. That's well, 98. I mean, huge moves. Yeah. I, I guess it's, you know, all currencies, right? I mean, they move quite a bit once they start moving. They trend. Yeah, they trend. I know. Momentum. So, but I think the dollar index is something to key off of. And now these rumblings, you know, it's, it's a, the trade deal stuff is kind of always scares me because I know a lot of stuff overnight, especially in Europe, they were saying it looks like a U.S. trade deal is starting to look closer to possibly happening. I, that really scares me when that starts to make global news because tomorrow is the day where all of a sudden they'll say, oh, the deal's off the table again or something. You know what I mean? No, that was yesterday, Teddy. Those, those, we went. <laughs> yes, right. I yeah, kid, no, I, I, I agree. It's that it's that dramatic. My I mean, tagline was, well, "What a difference a day makes." Even this oh. morning, doing the updates, because it really is remarkable that yesterday it was, "Hold on, we we got a full 11 months until the election 2020," and then this morning it was, "Wait, it's going to happen before December 15th, uh, 11 days, 11 months, 11 <laughs> days." That's the right. Answer. Yeah, it's amazing how those things swing like that, right? Yeah. Well, you know, you can see in this one fundamentally why it would happen. I mean, because. Those are huge taxes that everyone's paying, yeah. you know, if you're bringing stuff into the country. And right. if those taxes go away, it makes a big difference. Now, sure. if those taxes don't go away on the 15th of December, there's going right. to be more taxes that are going to put in. And my understanding is that most of that on the December 15th is on com com Con um, consumer yeah. consumer goods. Yeah, you're talking yeah. about right. you know, clothing, right. retail, yeah. you know. $160 billion worth of goods. And that's coming right. into an election year to bring it in again. Do you, yeah. you know, is Trump really going to... Um, Hit consumer goods as election season comes in. Well, he's going to put a new bill in that all consumers are going to get money like all the farmers got money. Oh boy, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. How about it? Now we do have the impeachment hearing that started today too. So I mean, I would be—that's something that could weigh on the dollar as well for a couple of days. Okay. And then I guess so. we get year-end funding. We get the repo market. The, re the repo market, folks. What yeah. happened is that the Fed. You know, they're oversubscribed by like billions. They, they've put out 15 billion first, 48 billion came in. At the end of yesterday, they went up to 25 billion. So that repo market is the banks still need more money for the end of the year. Right. I'm, surpri I'm surprised the Fed didn't go right to 48. It's like, okay, now they're still shot 25 billion. Yeah. And we're December 4th. So, you know, that uh, it'd be interesting to see where that scramble comes from, you know, because. I believe that the U.S. banks need dollars. 
You know, I mean, say so they need money, but they need dollars too. Yeah. You know, you, you can't you can't basically hold it. Uh, I believe in other currencies, as you come into that close of the year. But, no, no. Yeah. Right. Dollars count on the balance sheet. Yeah. Not exactly. not 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 yen yeah. or francs or whatever you want. No. You got to put put them in dollars. Yeah. The rebalance the rebalancing is coming no matter what. Yeah. Yeah. That's there's a lot coming down that's the line. A, that's a good quote, man. That is. <laughs> We're gonna have a wild holiday market this year, guys. I like it. I like it. Listen, folks, That's you can reach spank. Teddy every trading day at forex-trading-unlock.com. That's forex-trading-unlock.com. Teddy, you have a great one, safe one, stay warm. We look forward to speaking to you next Wednesday. Thanks, guys. Let's Thanks, see how man. much lower the dollar is next week. Oh, I okay. like it, man. Seven <laughs> like days. It. Thanks, Teddy. Stay right hey. there, folks. Tommy and I are coming right back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that is transforming into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you're a trader in the market looking for exposure to gold or gold mining equities, then now is a perfect time to sign up for Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. The summer is over, gold is trading back above $1,500, and the 10-year treasury is hovering at around 1.5%. Tom O'Brien has been writing his weekly gold report for almost 18 years. There's no one that knows more about how the gold market trades and how gold mining equities react. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, Tom publishes his weekly gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. As of September 3rd, Gold Report subscribers have five active open positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 38% for each position. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up today by visiting TFNN.com. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow's up 193. Nasdaq up 53. S&P's up 25, folks. And uh, as you come over to our website, at TFNN, folks, you're going to see right under featured content every trading day right now. you get got a morning market report. you got an afternoon market report, That's too. right, man. I try and get up there every morning and every afternoon come in terms of what's driving the market action. Yeah. We've had a lot. There have been easy reports to write, man, because there's a lot going on in the morning and the afternoon. We were just joking with Teddy Kicks that what a difference a day makes. Yesterday, the report was markets trade lower on... Trade deal might be pushed back a year this morning. Up, oh, trade deal back in action. Uh, so a little bit of the highlights in terms of what's talked about the trade deal. You had ADP payrolls out this morning as well. We, we haven't really light. talked about it yet. No, 67,000. 
The estimate was 150. Yeah. Uh, really be interesting to see what happens on Friday. But you can click on the Wednesday market report out there. You get a quick chart of the S&P futures up here as of about 9 a.m. this morning. And you see the acceleration to the upside on the S&P. The news on the trade deal breaking at about 4 a.m. You trade in the S&Ps of 3,087 to about 3,107. Got NASDAQ future chart up there as well ahead of the news. Um, excuse me, ahead of the open. ADP headlines down there. Larry Page, we talked about Sergey Brin stepping down. That's the Google chart pre-market, 1303. I think it's hanging right around that number. Uh, you got the 9 a.m. market update. If you want to nice. check that out. Yeah. A quick three-minute update that I do at 9 a.m. every morning ahead of Larry Pesavento's program. And then uh, just charts of kind of what's moving this morning. You had an Apple trading higher this morning. I pulled up a chart of Intel. Of course, Intel, AMD on the trade deal, both always moving big. And then um, Microsoft, Disney, surprising. Disney closed yesterday, 148.58. was up more than a dollar pre-market this morning. Exxon Mobil, oil moving big, right? And then links down there to Tiger TV. So check that out. This is the front page of TFNN. Those articles up there, morning, afternoon, the whole deal. Huge. Yeah. Stay right there, folks. We'll get that Think of Swim coming up next. Then I'm at Mr. Basil Chapman, Steve Rose, Dave White. I'll be back this afternoon. Thanks, pal. Thanks, man. Bam! Go get him, folks.